Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're going to jump right in. My name is Ashley Shukakis, and I oversee the uh, solid waste program here for the city, including the rollout of this new organics program that we're going to get into today. Uh, we're so glad you're here. We have a lot of important information we want to share with you regarding the new state law, SB 1383, which is requiring everyone to recycle their food waste with their green waste. And we are going to be referring to that as organics. Um, and most importantly, we just want to make sure that you have all the information you need to move forward, make it a smooth transition once EDCO, our waste hauler, gets the program up and running. So for this hour-long workshop, we have several guest speakers here today to discuss your role and everything, starting with Jessica Toth. She's our executive director. I'm sorry, not our executive director. She's the executive director of the Solana Center, which is a nonprofit here in Encinitas. And the city has been working them, with them for decades on environmental education. So we're so happy to have them here. Um, they have a lot of wonderful insight and they'll be sharing that with us today. And Jessica will be the moderator for the rest of this workshop. She'll be introducing our other speakers from Cal Recycle the State Agency um, that's implementing the law as well as Ed Fuller Waste Hauler. And then after the presentations, we'll have some time for Q&A. So make sure that you're putting your questions into that Q&A box and we'll make sure that we get through as many as we can in the last 20 minutes or so. And then before I hand it over to Jessica, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge um, all that the, our business community has been through this past year. We really appreciate you guys pushing through and all you, you've done um, to continue to make our community a really great place to live and visit. And we know it's not easy to ask you to take on this additional task, um, but it is really exciting overall. It's very important. It's, going to really shake up the way that we perceive and handle food waste. And it's also gonna help us meet our climate action plan goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So it's really big deal. We're um, again, really excited about it. And just by being here, you're showing how much you care about our community and um, our, the health of our residents and environment. So thank you so much. And with that, I will turn it over to Jessica. And I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to ask one of the other panelists to confirm that you can see my screen. Yes, okay. Um, well, thank you, Ashley. And I know that you're all here to learn about what you need to do and by when. We're fortunate to have the very people answer those questions. So today we have Cal Recycle, which established the Organic Waste Prevention and Diversion Regulations, and EDCO, uh, who will be providing the service for the diversion. Uh, this is actually a photo from a dumpster at an Encinitas grocery store. And I show it only to um, uh, confirm that we all know that in general, um, and particularly at food businesses, there's always excess food and food scrap is really inevitable. But I uh, see if I can keep the ambient noise from disturbing. So, <clears throat> Why are we concerned about food waste going to landfills? Um, so first of all, there are people in need in, our, in the San Diego region. And here in um, the San Diego County, one in five kids are food insecure. And a third of all food is thrown away. If all food that were thrown away, a third of it could feed all the people in need in our region. Um, in addition, Besides taking up landfill space and throwing away resources, there's a large environmental cost. Food waste in landfills emits significant greenhouse gases. And to give you an idea of the significance, we estimate that in Encinitas, from Encinitas food businesses, you generate about 2,000 tons of food waste each year. So it's 2,000 tons of food waste from food generating businesses just in Encinitas. And when that's landfilled, it releases a lot of greenhouse gases. Um, over a thousand metric tons of uh, potent gases. So just to give you a scenario, if we as a business community, let's say we reduced food waste, um, the amount that we're generating by 25% and we composted another 25% and then we used Edco's industrial processing system, which um, Jim will talk more about for the remaining 50%, that would be equivalent to removing the annual emissions of more than 650 passenger vehicles from the roads each year. So the greenhouse gases are significant impact on the environment. 
So the city of Encinitas, Edco, and Solana Center are here to help you. We can work with you to identify how much food there is and what types you're throwing away. Um, we can establish internal procedures to reduce preventable food waste, and we can connect you with local organizations that provide edible foods to serve people in need. We can also help you with right-sizing your hauling services so you can actually save. For over five years, Solana Center has been working with businesses through our Less to Landfill program. To help picture how this pertains to your business, I'll tell you some of the things we've learned from working with local food businesses. At full service restaurants, the annual amount discarded ranges from 25,000 to 96,000 pounds of food waste a year. Of course, the number varies with the size of the restaurant, but my point is that it all adds up and not that one business is doing something deliberately wasteful, but it, it adds up for our community. 60% of food waste in restaurants we've worked with comes from back of house food preparation, not from plate scrapings. And the average waste per meal in our findings is consistent with the national data, which is half a pound per meal. So from the Encinitas perspective, with the nudge from calorie cycle, we have an opportunity to set in motion systems to recover edible food for people in need, to save resources and money, and to do good for the environment. So enough from me. Now you'll hear from Roberta at Calorie Cycle, the state agency that brings us the new legislation to address greenhouse gas generated by landfilling organic material, such as food. And then Roberta will turn it over to Jim from EDCO, which is about to go live with an anaerobic digestion facility that will process Encinitas' excess food scraps along with landscape trimmings. And as Ashley said, we've left time at the end for questions. Feel free though throughout the presentations to put your questions in the Q&A section, and then I will address those at the end um, with our panelists. Thank you. I turn it over to Roberta now. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All righty. Everybody can see that okay? Yes. All right. Well, good afternoon. Well, good morning, actually. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Roberta Goldenpenny with Calorie Cycle. I'm also joined by my supervisor, Jill Larner, who will help with any um, questions during the Q&A later in the presentation. I work in the local assistance and market development branch. Thank you again to the City of Encinitas staff for allowing me to present today. I will first provide a very brief review of commercial recycling laws currently in effect, and then I will provide an overview of what the new Super Pollutant Reduction Strategy Regulations, or SB 1383, will be requiring of generators, meaning commercial businesses, government entities, schools, colleges, universities, and residents who produce organic waste materials. Okay. Business recycling requirements in California started in 2012 with mandatory commercial recycling and leads up to SB 1383, effective January 1, 2022. This is a significant law that will impact all waste generators in the state. For the purposes of these laws, commercial business means a firm, partnership, proprietorship, joint stock company, corporation, or association, whether for-profit or nonprofit, strip mall, industrial facility, or a multifamily residential dwelling of five or more units. The definition of business is quite broad and is essentially any non-residential waste generator. <clears throat> Excuse me. AB 341, or Mandatory Commercial Recycling, became effective in 2012. The Mandatory Commercial Recycling Law focuses on increased commercial waste diversion as a method to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Business recycling requirements under AB 341 include commercial waste generators with four cubic yards or more of commercial solid waste per week, or multifamily residential dwellings of five units or more must arrange for recycling services. AB 341, also known as MCR, also set a statewide goal of 75% recycling. The 75% goal is simply not attainable without addressing the organic portion of the waste stream. It is significant. 30% of total disposal is either compostable or digestible. Reaching the 75% reduction recycling and composting goal would represent an estimated 20 to 30 million metric tons reduction in greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. 
In 2014, the legislature passed AB 1826, or Mandatory Commercial Organics Recycling Law, also known as MORE, which became effective in 2016. It set a statewide organics reduction to landfill goal at 50% by the year 2020, and it also set organics reduction to landfill requirements for commercial generators. The law started in 2016 with only the very largest organics generators and became more inclusive of smaller generators each year. Currently, commercial generators with two cubic yards or more per week of waste generation are required to comply with the law. Under both AB 341 and AB 1826, local jurisdictions are required to have programs in place for commercial organics generators and to conduct annual education, outreach, and monitoring of covered commercial generators. Jurisdictions have to identify specific pieces of information and provide that in the annual report to CalRecycle. <clears throat> As a business owner or multifamily property owner in Encinitas, you may have been contacted by your local government representatives and by EDCO about the state requirements to recycling and recycling organic materials. You may have been offered waste audits to determine what recyclable materials you are generating and the amount of organic materials you're generating uh, to determine your recycling service needs to comply with these laws. Okay. In 2019, the previous two laws were amended by AB 827. AB 827 took effect on July 1st, 2020, and it's intended to educate and involve consumers in achieving the state's recycling goals. We often refer to AB 827 as the front of the house commercial recycling law. AB 827 requires businesses subject to the requirements of the previous two laws, MCR and more, to provide customers with recycling and or organics collection bins or containers to collect the material generated from products purchased and consumed on the premises. The bins or containers must be visible and easily accessible to customers. They must be clearly marked with labeling indicating which materials are appropriate for each container. And they must be placed adjacent to each trash can, excluding rest restroom base bins. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Full service restaurants are not required to provide customers or containers for customers if employees are provided with properly labeled, visible, and readily accessible recycling and organics waste recycling containers wherever trash containers are located. This slide shows model labels and signage that CalRecycle has developed for jurisdictions and businesses to utilize. And just a, a caveat, um, during COVID, we understand that businesses are limited to what in-house dining. And so if you are not serving food on site for immediate consumption, then these requirements currently do not apply to you. However, as soon as you do, then that is something once the collection system is in place needs to occur. All right. Organic, as previously mentioned, organic waste is the largest waste stream in California. It's defined broadly and includes food waste, paper, cardboard, green waste, organic textiles and carpets, lumber, wood, biosolids, digestate, manure, and sludges. At the same time, one in five Californians are food insecure, yet we continue to throw away edible food. California throws away more than 6 million tons of food waste every year. And as such, Senate Bill 1383 was passed in 2016 as part of California's larger strategy to combat climate change. This law was designed to reduce the global warming super pollutants, such as methane, which is up to 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide. When organic material breaks down in the landfill, methane is generated. In California, landfills are the third largest producer of methane into our environment. And to reduce methane now, we have to move away from landfilling organic wastes. Recycling this organic waste and recovering edible food is a fast track to combating climate change. Senate Bill 1383 sets statewide targets. It requires Californians to reduce organic waste disposal to landfill by 50% by 2020 and 75% by 2025, as well as increase edible food recovery for human consumption by 20% by 2025. This will help the one in five Californians who don't have enough to eat. CalRecycle collaborated with jurisdictions and other stakeholders over the last three and a half years to complete the regulations, which were finalized in November of last year. Mm 
There are many benefits if we all successfully implement California's super, pollution, super pollutant reduction strategy, including environmental benefits such as fighting climate change, improved air quality, and less landfill waste, providing millions of meals to Californians without enough to eat, and creating thousands of new green jobs. Mr. Jim Ambrosa will be discussing this information in greater detail, but I briefly wanted to touch on some of the city's requirements for commercial businesses. Under the regulations starting in 2022, the city of Encinitas is required to provide mandatory organic waste collection services to all of their generators. Mandatory service is required to ensure that we achieve the organic waste reduction targets. This is what we refer to as automatically providing service or universal service. Businesses must participate in the service unless they've been granted a waiver by the city. And for any commercial businesses that are not subscribed starting in 2022, they will automatically receive the service. This approach is similar to what happens when you move into a house. When you have your trash service start, you receive all of your containers automatically. If you do not have service yet, it will be important that you work with Edco to right size your service. This means, this may, for example, be able to reduce your trash service if you are using the other containers for organic waste and other recyclables. Now I'll cover requirements for commercial businesses related to their collection programs. Any organic waste generator, including commercial businesses, must either subscribe and comply with the requirements of the organic waste collection service provided by the city or self-haul organic waste. And please note that the city will have specific requirements for self-hauling. The commercial business must also periodically inspect the recycling and organic waste containers for contamination and inform employees if containers are contaminated and of the requirement to properly use the containers. These two requirements will reduce contamination of organic waste by the employees of a business. And when organic waste is mixed with non-organic waste, the recoverability of both materials is compromised. Recovery options become increasingly limited and the value of at least one material can be completely lost. For example, broken glass mixed in with food waste can render each material exceedingly more expensive and technically challenging to recover. If a business does not generate any of the materials that would be collected in one type of container, then the business does not have to have that container for employees or customers. For example, if your business does not generate any green or food waste, then you would not need to have the collection service or the internal container for that material for your employees or customers. A business in this situation should coordinate with the city to determine if a waiver from the collection service can be provided. By 2022, the city will have a process for deciding if a business is eligible for a waiver. Businesses can also manage organic waste on site or use community scale composting activities. Businesses must annually provide information to employees, contractors, tenants, and customers about organic waste recovery requirements uh, and about proper sorting of organic waste. If you need assistance with education, please contact your local recycling coordinator, Ashley Stratakis. And also businesses will have to provide information to new tenants before or within 14 days upon, of upon occupation of the premises. If the city needs to conduct an inspection, then a commercial business has to provide or arrange for access to their properties during all inspections. All right. SB 1383 requires certain commercial edible food generators to recover for human consumption the maximum amount of edible food that would otherwise be disposed in a manner that is appropriate for that business. On the next slide, I'll go over which businesses fall under these tier one and tier two categories. Each commercial edible food generator must have a contract or written agreement with a food recovery service or organization or services that will collect their edible food for recovery or self-haul edible food to a food recovery organization that will accept the edible food. There are also record keeping requirements for commercial edible food generators. If you're interested in what those are, please let me know and I can follow up with you afterwards. And this slide just briefly shows who the tier one and tier two commercial edible food generators are. Most affected businesses in Encinitas will likely fall within the tier two category, meaning that they would need to start diverting and donating their edible food starting 2024. 
Regionally, planning for the edible food requirements is already occurring. Local jurisdictions like Encinitas are working to ensure that the responsibility for edible food recovery requirements does not solely fall on the impacted businesses. They will be working on providing guidance and assisting in navigating these regulations. However, as a business owner, you do have the responsibility to be active in understanding and fulfilling your role within these regulations. And with that, here's my contact information should you have any questions. Thank you again for the opportunity to present. Any, uh, or I can't remember, are we taking questions now or after? Um, I think I'll take it from here, actually. <clears throat> Sounds good, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Roberta, for that very good overview of the new regulation. Uh, my name is Jim Ambroso, I'm the general manager for EDCO. Uh, overseeing all of the North San Diego County locations for the company, servicing uh, six of the cities here in the county as well, including uh, the great city of Encinitas, which we're here to talk about primarily today. Um, the, uh, uh, my role today is to share a little bit of the how the program will roll out, uh, what EDCO is doing to um, uh, put together the, the details of the program and uh, and how it'll, it'll be uh, uh, rolled out to your various businesses and how it may impact you. So let me uh, get my slides up here so we can talk about that. Get the full screen on here, hopefully. There we go. Uh, is that, uh, if someone could give me a nod that that's, uh, you can see the full screen here of the presentation? Sure do. Okay, good, then we'll proceed. All right, uh, a little bit about EDCO, just real quick. Um, many of you, I think, have seen our trucks in the community, because uh, like as I said, we do service uh, six cities in North County. We actually service 13 cities in all of San Diego County. Um, the company is a family-owned business. It's uh, originated and started right here in San Diego County. The owner still lives down in South County and uh, um, is still alive and well and, and still actively involved in the business. Um, we are a full service provider, meaning we provide all the services to residents as well as businesses uh, in each line of business from residential, commercial to even roll off services. Many of you have seen uh, that or use that service. Um, we're vertically integrated a uh, diversion infrastructure. And what we mean by that is that we have no landfills, but we do offer all of the, the services from collection to landfilling. Um, because we're not a landfill company, we try to promote as much recycling as we can and have made a significant investment in the recycling infrastructure here in the county. We operate uh, several recycling facilities that process recyclables. We also have um, construction demolition recycling facilities. And we also just recently built an anaerobic digester, which I'm gonna give you a little more detail on in just a second. Uh, very low dedicated uh, workforce, um, averaging over 15.5 years is uh, from across the workforce, from drivers, mechanics, sorters, uh, to customer service folks. Uh, we have a very dedicated um, team of people. So how are we gonna remove these organics from the waste stream? The uh, collection programs that we've had out there in the past have focused on the trash and the recycling of our curbside recycled material or in, in the industrial and uh, commercial sense, uh, your blue bin containers, representing all the cardboard, plastics uh, and rigid containers. And that isn't changing, that'll continue on. In fact, we hope to enhance that all the more. But now we're introducing a new organics program and the organics program is designed to help us effectively and efficiently separate food waste and other organics from our waste stream, get it out of the gray trash container, get it into a separate organics container um, or your green waste container that you may already have and then allow us to process that separately and create renewable resources from it. So the focus is going to be on uh, helping uh, to provide you these new containers if you need them or help you figure out how to separate it from your, your uh, industrial and, and commercial locations and get it into these uh, separate containers. As, as mentioned earlier, the containers will remain the same colors in the sense that trash will continue to be gray. Uh, the commercial recycling materials, the bottles, cans, cardboard, plastics will continue to be blue. And then the organics will go into the green commingled or or um, source separated containers. And I'll explain a little more about that in a second. Labeling, we absolutely will provide labeling for you to as far as what can go in there and what cannot go in there. It'll be done in both uh, pictures as well as text. 
so that uh, we can keep this as simple as possible. Um, as we dig deeper into the waste stream, it gets a little more complex, sometimes confusing. So we hope that the information that'll be presented on the containers will help you decide which one goes where. As far as other programs um, that we will providing, um, it will include a lot of hands-on support. Um, as we, again, uh, intensify our recycling and, and dive deeper into the waste stream, there's a lot of questions that come up and we wanna want you to know that we will be available to help uh, basically hold your hands and get this done um, as, as simply and as efficiently as possible. Uh, we will be providing site-specific waste evaluations. We'll actually be visiting your facilities and reviewing what you have, along with the Solana Center helping us with that, City of Encinitas staff helping with that. There will be many folks that will be available to review what you have and come up with the best solution. One of the things we want to do is adjust your services, if at all possible. All we're doing, as we said earlier, is moving material from the gray container to an organics container. By doing that effectively, you may very well be able to reduce your, your waste or trash um, component of your service, meaning that we can um, maybe eliminate certain days of service or go to smaller containers. Uh, the idea there is to reduce that cost uh, as we absorb the cost for the organics program. And we wanna help you do that as much as possible. Uh, there is a waiver process that's been mentioned that if there is a uh, just an absolute no way that this can be accommodated in your particular location, then uh, there is a waiver program that can be applied for and reviewed and uh, maybe applied to your, your particular situation. Be extensive outreach and education that'll be coming your way. Uh, in fact, uh, in the next week, you'll be receiving a mailer from EDCO. That is a, we call it a coming soon mailer. It's, um, it's just provides some background information similar to what we're presenting today but just to let you know that the program is uh, soon arriving uh, later this year, and we want to uh, let you know how you can continue to get more information. We'll be using websites and other social media along with our partner, the Solana Center, uh, will be helping us to get information out uh, to all of you. So there'll be ample uh, places and opportunities to get information you may need so that we can uh, help you uh, walk through this uh, new program and get it implemented as soon as possible. The record keeping and reporting piece is going to be important, probably much more so than it has been in the past. All of us will play a role in this. As the generator, you will have obligations to share information about what you generate. Uh, and we as a collector will have to share that information. Um, I will tell you that uh, EDCO has invested significantly in a, a platform to capture and collect all of this information in one place so that we can provide you with details and information if you need it, but also provide the, the regulatory agencies, Cal Recycle and the city of Encinitas, um, a collective totals of information that we are not only collecting, but how it's being managed uh, after it's collected um, and recycled. So a lot of documentation record keeping coming, but I want you to know this isn't uh, something that we won't be able to help you with. We're absolutely gonna provide you uh, many details and uh, support um, in doing that. So, why is EDCO uh, moving forward so quickly with this? It's uh, largely in part because we've uh, invested in and are now completing a very large uh, facility, a new facility, recycling facility for organic waste. This is a picture of the digester um, that we just uh, uh, developed in the city of, Enc I'm sorry, of Escondido. Uh, the tanks that you see there is the new addition along with a gas uh, treatment and recovery system in between. These tanks are designed to recycle between 96,000 and 180,000 tons per year of organic materials. Uh, the, the material that we're gonna put in there is, is a mixture of green waste and food waste, organics. Um, this is the first digester, uh, commercial digester built in the county. And uh, we're excited to bring it forward. It's uh, been in development for eight years. And uh, we saw this uh, regulation coming and, and uh, said we need to develop a, a solution for uh, San Diego County, and we're excited that it's ready to, to fire up. Um, what, will we have, what will happen inside here? And I won't get into all the science at all, but uh, we'll mix the green waste and food waste together after we remove contaminants. Uh, it'll go into these tanks, and over a period of a, really a, about a, a 10 to 14 days, uh, the material will break down in an anaerobic environment, which is an environment without oxygen. Uh, and what that does is it produces methane gas. We capture the gas and actually clean it and pump it right back into the pipeline where it is taken out again to, to, um, to fuel our trucks. So our trucks that go uh, 
in and around our neighborhoods and into your facilities will be run on natural gas or renewable natural gas that'll come from the breaking down of our organic material in this facility. We also produce a fertilizer product, which is very high in nutrients that will, will move back out into the agricultural community in the surrounding areas here. So it's a very um, useful tool, a very effective tool for uh, transfer, transforming, I would say, these organic materials into renewable resources. Who's impacted by this and how will it impact your commercial business as well? Very obviously, we look at the multifamily side of our commercial business. There'll be residential food and landscape waste that we will be collecting uh, or enhancing uh, the, the, the food or the, sorry, the green waste collection components that are out there now. Condos, apartments, and mobile home parks will all be participating in this as we help uh, collect the residential food waste with their landscape waste. From the other side of the businesses, there'll be the food service side, retail, manufacturing and distribution. Uh, all may, may or may not have uh, quantities of food, but uh, each will be evaluated individually. The obvious ones that have been mentioned already are the grocery stores and restaurants, uh, their various types, food manufacturing and distribution. Um, and then there's the non-retail food, or sorry, non-food retail manufacturing and warehouses. All have to at least be considered in this program, and we will help all of you to decide are you, do you need to participate in a program or not? Uh, but um, all will have to at least be reviewed and analyzed to see if you have the quantities and the ability to recycle the food and we'll help you with doing that. So what can go in that digester? The digester, as I mentioned, is an enclosed facility. It's, uh, it's, it has bacteria uh, organisms in there that break down the food and they can be a little picky just like any any other bacterial environment. So we have to be a little careful about it, but frankly, the, the, the technology of anaerobic digestion is quite robust and it can take a lot of different organic materials. And our tagline is if it grows, it goes. Um, under the commercial side, we will see uh, and, and look to put most raw cooked and prepared foods in there, all types of foods, including meat and bones, uh, food prep scraps from kitchens and restaurants and delis, even on the manufacturing side, if there's off um, materials that uh, come off the manufacturing lines, they can be collected and, and put into the digester. Expired foods, damaged packaging with food in it, uh, we will be able to take that kind of material. Food overruns and scraps from the manufacturing side, as well as paper products. And this is one of the things that's kind of new and unique is that we can take soiled paper. It must be paper. It must be paper without plastic or metal on it. Some of the packaging you have to be careful about because it includes many other things besides paper. But um, filters, um, we can take paper bags, craft paper bags that is, as long as they don't have a, a wax lining on them. Um, landscape waste, paper products, as I mentioned already, wood waste is part of the organic stream. So clean lumber, um, untreated wood, non-painted wood. These are things that we are recycling today in our construction demolition side. But if you have some of that, that can be also be incorporated into this and then organic textiles and carpets are part of a recycling program we're already offering. And then the program also is trying to divert manure, digestates and sludges away from landfilling too. So this program is really focusing more on the food side of this um, and we're gonna capture that. Some of these other things, if you have them, will help you figure out how to divert those from landfilling as well. I wanna focus just quickly on the what's not acceptable because there are some things that the digester doesn't work well if it's, they're present. Plastics, for example. Um, we really don't want plastics uh, in the waste stream. The obvious things are plastic bags. Um, in the restaurant side, you've got clamshells, straws, cups, packaging, but in the industrial side, you also have uh, plastic containers and buckets, um, um, jugs, a lot of things that are industrial cleaning supplies, things like that. Uh, those things need to be rinsed and emptied and recycled in your blue bin as you have hopefully been doing in the past already. So don't change that. But if you do have, uh, again, the things I've mentioned above, they're perfectly acceptable for now incorporating into your organics container. Glass is still a no-no. Styrofoam, I absolutely don't want it. Metal, those things again can go in the right container, the blue container, and uh, we can hopefully keep them out. Uh, and well as compostable utensils and bags and cups, we're getting a lot of questions around, well, I have compostable or biodegradable uh, plastic. Hopefully I can use that. And while those are preferred over, over regular plastic, um, they're not acceptable in the digester because they're, it takes longer to break those down 
then we have residence time in our digesters. So we really prefer that you keep those out and uh, not put them into the organics system. So what does this mean to you? Um, if you currently have green waste that's generated at your facility, and primarily this will be in our, in our multifamily locations, our apartments, condos, places like that, you probably have green waste containers. And some of our industrial uh, customers have green waste containers as well. You can mix your food waste organics into the green waste container. We're not gonna change that. We wanna just continue to help you make that simple transition and move it out of your trash container into your green waste container. That's uh, one method that'll be used. And the second one is when you don't have green waste containers on your property, you may be a restaurant in a strip mall or, or uh, whatnot and you just don't, or grocery store, you don't have any green waste, you don't have a green waste container. Um, then we will help you collect it in a, what we call source separated collection method. And in that case, um, we'll be providing a separate container just for your food waste. It may be a cart, it may be a bin as you see pictured here. It may even be a compactor if you're a large generator where we'll help you separate the food into a separate uh, container like that. As you see, we will be able to take, it, take packaged foods. Um, we don't expect you to unpack or, or depackage all of the food that might come off your, your particular location, for example, in a grocery store. Uh, it's too much labor. We are building and installing a new machine in our plant that I showed you earlier that will actually depackage um, waste streams like this, um, where you have a lot of packaging. You may be a manufacturer of something, let's just say yogurt or, or something, a food product um, that has a lot of small packages and they're in boxes. Um, we can, if that is off spec and you need to get rid of it, we can take that into this machine. The machine will actually separate the packaging and the cardboard boxes from the food and we'll be able to then mix the food right in with our green waste and digest it. So this is a system that can work very effectively for you if you do have packaging. But if you, we are trying to encourage you not to use large plastic bags or liners, or if you can remove those, uh, we'll help you figure out a way to do that, hopefully um, to make our process more efficient. How can you separate it inside your facility? One of the things that we, we realize we need to do is help you do, um, give you some tools to help you separate the food at the point it's generated. For a restaurant, for example, um, you're not gonna wanna carry uh, bags of food out to your um, container, perhaps out in the enclosure in the parking lot. So we wanna give you a, a container you can take inside the restaurant. And we refer to those as caddies, like you see in the left picture here, this gray thing. That's something we're actually offering to residents, but it can also be used inside of a commercial kitchen. Um, Slim Jims is another one. It's um, just a little bit larger, thinner uh, plastic container that you can fill up. And when it's full, take it outside and, and dump it into the green container uh, in the parking lot. Um, larger facilities, you may need a Gaylord container like in a grocery store. It's, it's just a large cardboard box with a liner in it and throw your um, off spec or outdated uh, grocery items in there and then take that out to the dock. Uh, the same with maybe a tote like you see here. We can offer those things and we'll help you uh, to establish what's best for you. Where do we go from here? On a timeline basis, uh, you need to know that the Encinitas City Council is reviewing the components of this program, including the cost. And they're over the next several months are gonna be completing that formal review and then announcing what the program will ultimately finally look like and what it will ultimately cost. So we don't have that pricing information for you today, but that is going through review with the city council here in the next two months. After that, we plan to roll this out to the residents of Encinitas in June. Um, they'll, they'll get a program to start with their green waste collection program for green waste and for food there. And then the commercial program will roll out uh, there, thereafter. We'll start with a, an extensive education and outreach program in June through August, and then doing the on-site visits and program startup uh, through the rest of this year. And our hope is to have this all set up by the end of this year, uh, when we get to 2022, that we're ready to go and, and, um, and the businesses are, are uh, set up and ready to go. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Jessica who will uh, address questions for us. Thank you. I hope you all are as, uh, as excited as I am to see this happen. I, I know that it's going to have some uh, deep implications for your businesses. And I wanted to summarize uh, while we take questions, I'll, I will leave this up. But uh, I, the current timeline is that right now businesses can receive uh, recycling signage support uh, beginning in the spring. The community, you'll see campaigns to build awareness about food waste issues 
uh, both for residential and businesses. And then by the spring and the summer, uh, businesses will be offered free one-on-one -on -one consulting. Uh, Solana Center's helping with that. And I think Edco may be involved as well. By the summer, uh, we're gonna start, the uh, Edco will start the um, pickup program for residential and multifamily dwellings. By the fall, large businesses uh, will have pickup begin and uh, in the winter of this year, businesses um, can receive, uh, will be uh, visited uh, if they need uh, to help with their collection and the collection containers will be distributed, curbside service will begin. And then also we will begin connecting you with food rescue organizations and then smaller businesses will also begin service in the winter. So that's, there's a lot going on. The state requirements are listed at the bottom. Um, and I will leave that up and I would like to um, address the questions. There are a couple um, good ones that have come in. Uh, first of all, one was already answered in the chat, but um, this program is being, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available for those who attended afterwards. In fact, I think it'll be available to everybody uh, posted on Encinitas' website. Ashley will link also be included uh, in the follow-up email that you're going to send. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question is from Stephanie Morris, uh, and it's if customers are not eating on site, are businesses required to have organics recycling bins available for customers? So I'm going to turn that over to Roberta. Great question, Stephanie. Yeah, so um, currently right now, because EDCO's program is not live and because of COVID, until the business has the organic service and as long as you're not providing food for immediate on-site consumption, then you wouldn't need to have the containers. And this is through the remainder of this year because AB 827 only impacts MCR and more or AB 341, AB 1826 covered generators. And so that is if you have a service level of two cubic yards or more of total combined solid waste. Um, so if you have one trash dumpster that is three cubic yards, then you would be under these regulations. Um, starting in 2022, that's gonna change and the requirement will extend to all generators because we are under 1383. But um, just to reiterate, once EDCO service is available and your business is serving food for on-site consumption, then the businesses would need to comply. And so to Stephanie's point, if it's not on-site consumption, you do not need to have organics bins available to customers, customer-facing organics bins. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. That's um, all good to know. Um, from Ann Sheridan, uh, this is a question. Um, for EDCO, for Jim, if EDCO is not, doesn't have a landfill, does it incinerate the non-recyclables? Hmm. No, we absolutely do not. Um, we, um, the non-recyclables, uh, which are less and less, um, unfortunately still goes to landfill. Uh, we do our best to try to recover as much as possible and, and find more outlets for re recovered material. And I think we have more work to do. Uh, this is a great step to get the organics out. And now the waste stream, if you, uh, you'll you find, and we're finding clearly that the waste stream is drying up and uh, when you remove organics. And if we get it dried up, we can begin to start separating more materials out of there uh, and mine deeper into the what's left. So uh, the answer will be that uh, while we're still landfilling some, I think over time, and our hope is that we'll continue to mine it, what's left and reduce it to the bare, bare minimum. Uh, from Anonymous, um, and this is for Jim as well. If I have a yard waste bin at my house, can I throw food waste into it? How exactly is that going to work? So depending which city you live in, and if uh, I hope it's Encinitas, um, starting what will likely be June 1st, you will be able to add your food waste scraps to your green waste bin at your home. Uh, we are offering a kitchen caddy. It's, a, it's again, just a, a bucket or a device that you can use to separate food in your kitchens and take it out to your green waste bin and combine it with your green waste materials. So um, you can use whatever tool uh, you have uh, to separate it, whether it be a bucket or 
or a can or whatever you uh, fits in your kitchen. But uh, we want you to uh, have information as well as tools to separate and yes, combine it with your green waste um, in your uh, cart. And another question for Jim. Can you shed some more insight into what amount of grease that businesses can add to the service? Most restaurants are participating in some sort of fog collection, and maybe you can describe what that is for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Will this be, not be required by them anymore? That's a good question, and we're going to have to evaluate that along the way. Uh, FOG is, stands for fats, oil, and grease, which in most restaurants, if they have a grill, they're cooking, uh, they do have to collect the fats, oil, and greases. And uh, they do that in a separate container, and most of them have a separate service that comes by and uh, removes that grease uh, from their, their bins. Um, they, we are interested in grease. The digester process uh, works very well with grease and oils, uh, obviously just cooking oil type materials uh, works quite well. The organisms like it. Uh, in fact, it's been described, it's kind of a monster drink for them, um, really energizes them and they can produce a lot of methane gas. So we're not ready to uh, take on a lot of grease and the real concern there is just simply collection. How do we do that effectively so that it doesn't end up dripping or leaking somehow? Um, but um, the answer is yes, we are gonna be interested in, in incorporating that material someday, but not initially uh, from the commercial uh, restaurants. Thank you, great questions. I have another one for Jim. Did I hear correctly that commercial businesses could potentially be provided caddies, totes, Slim Jims, Gaylord containers? How would this work and how do businesses go about requesting them? Well, I think it's gonna, um, the answer is yes, we will help provide those kinds of containers. Uh, uh, we wanna make it simple and easy to get it to removed uh, from the organics that is from your facilities to your container outside that we are servicing. So um, that information will be forthcoming when we do the site visits and provide literature as to uh, what is available and how to get it. Um, today we are providing uh, caddies, uh, those little caddies to our residents and they're requesting them online and we're delivering them. Um, it's, we're in discussions with uh, Encinitas as to whether to deliver to everyone uh, or to have them requested online or both. So there'll be more information coming on that. Great. Um, this one is for Ashley. Uh, will businesses be inspected and will regulations be enforced? So eventually uh, businesses will be inspected and the regulations will be enforced, but not for a few years. The focus over the next two years is providing support and education so that hopefully we won't have to do any enforcement when the time comes in 2024. But as of right now, um, yeah, the next two years, there won't be enforcement. Great. The questions keep coming. Um, this one is uh, for Jim again. What's the difference between an anaerobic digester and an industrial compost facility? I'm curious about the compostable packaging that says it is industrially compostable and the few selections that are home compostable. My understanding is there is nowhere in San Diego that composts any packaging. Very good question, Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. So the difference really, uh, first question is, you know, the difference between anaerobic and aerobic and uh, uh, aerobic or compost sites. Compost sites are done outside in the open air and they do incorporate oxygen to help um, the organisms um, break down primarily organic materials, green waste, food waste. It can be done outside in a, in a compost pile or a commercial pile. Uh, anaerobic is again an enclosed tank where there is no oxygen, it's removed. They're different organisms. They don't live in an in air environment. They have to have, be uh, without oxygen and that's how they, they perform. Um, so we will operate an anaerobic digester where the byproducts are methane gas principally and, uh, and we can capture that gas and reuse it as we talked about. In an aerobic environment or a compost pile, um, they will get organisms there, break the material down into a soil type product and uh, it can be reused as um, many of you are doing, maybe at home or in a commercial setting. Um, uh, there's, there's, quite a, there's, a, there's a number of compost sites around. Um, the plastics are difficult for both of the uh, methods uh, if they don't break down quickly and readily or sufficiently. Um, the reason is that uh, what's left, uh, if it doesn't break down completely, then we're, we've got contamination in our compost 
or soil material or a fertilizer that we're going to distribute to the fields or to your garden bed. So um, it's really important to have a long term system where you can allow it to break down properly. And unfortunately, with the digester, it's a uh, we're turning material uh, within a matter of a few weeks, and it just isn't long enough for that to to uh, di uh, decompose. Thank you. Um, a question for Jim. Will pickup frequency change? It may. Uh, it really does depend on your situation. Um, our hope is that we can help you move again the organic component of your waste stream from your gray containers into the organics container. And if we do that effectively and, uh, and help you set it up and you do it, uh, it, it is likely that many uh, businesses will be able to reduce their frequency and reduce your cost as well. Another question for Jim. Will Edco's anaerobic digestion facility be open to private haulers, self, to self haulers too? If so, what would be the process? That's, um, that's a good question. I think uh, that we're just getting it started. So um, we're, we're setting it up for our route trucks, but I think down the road that, that will be likely that we could take self-hauled, uh, whether it be food waste or green waste. Um, we take self-hauled green waste today and uh, to take self-hauled combined green waste food, that's very likely, but um, we haven't addressed that yet and there'll be more information coming on that that question. Thank you. And Jim, can you explain a little bit about uh, EDCO's decision to take the yard waste and the food waste in one bin? Um, in other words, the trade-offs between additional service, but keeping uh, only taking the food waste, since that's a particular problem in our area that we don't have a solution to. Um, so, so what was EDCO's decision making in terms of um, combining the two into one bin for service to customers? Well, the one thing when we, we were looking at technology options, uh, one of the reasons we decided to go with a digester that can combine green waste and food waste is simply to reduce the collection impact. What we didn't want to do is give everybody a separate food container and put another truck on the, on the street so that instead of three trucks coming to your business, there'll be four. Uh, it would just add that many more traveled miles, air impacts, uh, things that we just didn't want to do. So we tried to try as best we can to um, work with commingled green waste where we have it uh, so that um, we can reduce those trips and, uh, and, and minimize the greenhouse uh, impacts that might come from all those trucks running around. Great. Um, and I there's been question over time as to what's the best solution for to-go containers. So um, you don't want any type of to-go containers in the waste stream uh, for the anaerobic digester. Um, Jim, do you want to comment? Solana Center's done some work in this area as well, but on what would be the best, uh, the ideal situation since you have recycling facilities as well um, mm -hmm. for to-go containers? Yeah, well, I think that um, you know it's it's a difficult thing to tell people what containers to use uh, when in their restaurant for to go or uh, primarily to go, and we are encouraging uh, converting to to paper based uh, to go containers. Uh, there's a number of them that are out there that are quite good, um, and if they can use paper, all the better. They can then uh, they likely will be soiled if they do contain food, and we take it home. Um, and uh, when finished, we can recycle them from our homes or recycle them in your business. But the plastic ones, uh, even as of today, the clamshells, buckets, uh, you know, um, they can be rinsed out and recycled in your blue container. Styrofoam is still a challenge for us. And, and in either case, if you're using styrofoam to go containers, we really can't uh, recycle those um, uh, presently. But we're encouraging folks to, to continue to use the PET plastic. If you must use plastic, use the PET plastic if you can, so that it can be rinsed and recycled in your blue container. Um, and then as much as you can, convert over to paper um, to go containers uh, and uh, look for those that are not wax lined or coated, if at all possible, because those uh, the wax is a problem. But there is, again, some very good paper containers that are coming out on the market that uh, we would encourage you to look at because they can be digested and even composted. So as an example, if I have pizza delivered to home, um, can I throw the remaining pizza and the box 
uh, in or is that a wax lined box most likely? Most pizza boxes are not wax lined and yes, they can go into your, um, your organics container. Uh, so in the past, we always said, if you have, you know, pizza stain boxes, we can't recycle those in the blue container, blue recycling bin. But in this case, now you can put that in your green container. And Roberta, can you talk to the percentages of food waste and, um, and food soiled papers uh, that we could potentially um, uh, divert? by going this method. In other words, statewide, I believe it's quite significant the amount of uh, food soiled papers yeah. that could be composted or go through the anaerobic digestion process. Yeah, so the pie chart that I showed in my presentation earlier, um, it kind of breaks out the percentage of the, of the California waste stream as a whole. Um, so in California's waste stream, in total, 27 million tons of organic waste was disposed in 2017. 18% um, of that was food waste. Another 18% was paper. So that could include food soil paper. It can also be um, your printer paper, writing paper, cardboard, OCC, um, that kind of stuff. Then we have other organics uh, as 19%. Lumber was 12%. So um, as a category in itself between paper and food, they're pretty large categories for recycling. And um, yeah, we just wanna try and move it out of the landfill so that we, we can reduce those greenhouse gases. And what is a better solution for papers, uh, Roberta? Uh, you said print, print paper, and maybe Jim wants to weigh in on that as well. Would you rather it go to, from an environmental point of view, would it be better off going to recycling or through uh, anaerobic digestion or composting? Um, well, food soil paper, it would be better going through the anaerobic digester because it's contaminated with the food waste. But if it's printer, printing and writing paper, put that in the blue bin and recycle it that way because um, there are paper mills out there that will turn it around right back into brand new paper. It's pretty limitless, limitlessly recyclable as far as I know. Great, so it becomes uh, repurposed in effect. And we have a number of questions. So Stephanie and Malika, if that answer did not answer your question, please uh, restate it. But uh, that question of whether the papers should go uh, into the recycling bin, only if they're food soiled, should they go into the um, food waste bin? Mm -hmm. And Jim, you're in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. Another question, I'm confirming that residential food waste stream will not have the packaging equipment, um, only the commercial stream. In other words, if I'm at home uh, and I see that a package of uh, lettuce has uh, gone bad, uh, I should empty the lettuce directly into the food waste stream and then throw the plastic packaging away, correct? Yes, um, and I appreciate that question very much because we're gonna do our best to get this message out. But residentially, we and, and even if you're combining any kind of food with uh, a commingled with green waste, we really need you to remove the packaging and the plastics, uh, whatever is there, because we will have to remove it. Uh, if you don't remove it, we'll have to remove it when it gets to our facility before it gets introduced to the digester. Commercially, as I mentioned, it's gonna be easier if there is contamination like packaging um, that we will have the machine to uh, separate that. But we, the machine will not take green waste and, and separate green waste or let's say packaging or plastics from green waste mixed with food. It won't be able to do that for green waste, but uh, um, source separated food where you've just got packaged food separately, yes, we can process that and remove it for you. Great. Well, we're right up against time. If there are no other pressing questions, I thank you all for your time and encourage you to um, send an email to Ashley or myself. Um, I'm Jessica at SolanaCenter.org. Ashley, I, uh, I don't know if people have your contact information, but if you have follow up questions, please contact us. Mm -hmm. And I think Ashley will have a follow up message. I'll turn it over to you. Yes, so I, um, to follow Jessica, we will be sending out a follow-up email for those who registered. We'll have a recording of this webinar. We'll also provide contact information for all the speakers here, including myself. 
and a handout for tips on um, food waste reduction um, for, so that you know you have something to work towards in the meantime as this program rolls out. And as we mentioned earlier, we have a council meeting com coming up on March 10th, so stay tuned for that for more information um, and how the you know, council will move forward. And um, also the email that I sent out will include a brief survey. So if you could fill it out, that would be really helpful as well. Um, if there's anything else, again, feel free to reach out to us, but thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time and your effort to make um, Antonia's a more sustainable and beautiful place to live. So thank you. I hope everyone has a great week.